In today's video, we're going to be installing our high flow turbo. So the D40s come with a Garrett GT2056V. It has a cast compressor wheel and a six plus six blade design, meaning there's six big fins and six smaller ones. The inducer measures in at 41.5 millimeters and the exducer is 56 millimeters and Garrett rates this up to 260 horsepower. For our high flow turbo, we're using a billet compressor wheel. It has a nine blade compressor wheel. This is a G series design, so the latest from Garrett. That's three generations newer than the GT design from the standard turbo. The inducer measures in at 48 millimeters and the exducer is 60 millimeters. So it's basically a G25 550 compressor wheel. So Garrett rates this compressor wheel for up to 550 horsepower. So now we're just running the stock turbine wheel. We're gonna go check the back pressure while we run it on the dyno to see if we might upgrade that later on. But we did get the hot side ceramic coated to help with heat. For this turbo, we're planning to turn it up to 30 PSI boost. So we had them put a better thrust bearing in it. That's enough talking, let's get this thing on. When you've got a fresh turbo before you start it up, you want to get some oil into it. That way you don't destroy the bearings in it. Right, crank it, Dad. I'm concerned that the stock clutch might start to slip once we get it tuned with that bigger turbo. So just to be safe, we're going to upgrade it. So we have a single mass flywheel to replace the factory dual mass. We're running the old clutch and pressure plate from our D22. So this is an XCD clutch plate that we've had modified with Kevlar facings. And this is the XCD black pressure plate. The black ones have the most clamp force, so it's the strongest pressure plate they have for the YD25s. This clutch setup on our D22 was holding 420 horsepower and 700 newton meters, so it'll be more than enough for our D40 build. So for this build, I'm planning to just do one mod at a time before we get it re-dynoed. So for example, this time we've just done the turbo stock exhaust stock intercooler, and then we'll see what difference that makes compared to stock. And then after that, we're gonna do just the exhaust, see what difference that makes. And then after that, we'll do an upgraded intercooler, see what that makes. Obviously the dyno already reads your boost pressure, AFRs, and it'll be able to show the horsepower difference, but I wanna get a couple extra readings like intake air temp, EGT, back pressure so that way when we do those mods you guys will be able to see why it's making the extra power right so here's some of the extra gauges we've added so we've made our own sort of intake pipe here without the throttle body and welded a bung for our intake air temp sensor had a plate put there and it's just got a bung on it that's a boost reference there on the exhaust side i've added an exhaust manifold back pressure sensor so we're reading it from the egr plate on the exhaust manifold and got some copper tube that cools down the gases before it goes to this little canister here this just dampens the pulses so that it reads a lot better on the gauge so it took the car out for a drive just to make sure the gauges are working but i think we found another issue with the car so on that little drive we went for it was getting up to 10 psi boost but the back pressure was reaching 30 psi So I suspect there could be a blockage in the exhaust system, which would explain why it felt so underpowered. But because of this blockage, it's kind of forcing me to have to do an exhaust because with there being such a big differential in the boost and back pressure, that adds a lot of stress on the thrust bearing. And I don't want to destroy this new turbo. Here's the stock exhaust next to the three inch exhaust we're about to install. So the stock one has a catalytic converter straight off the back of the turbo. After that, it shrinks down to about two inches down there. And it just comes along, has a big muffler on it, and then straight out the back. The new one comes straight off the back of the turbo, uh, already has an EGT bung, which is nice for our sensor. Then after a little bit, steps up to three inch, and then from there, it's three inch all the way through. No mufflers, no cap, so it will be really good for flow. With the upgraded turbo and exhaust fitted, we headed back to BB Garage to see what it does on the dyno. So 
So we made some changes to this. We've added a three inch turbo back exhaust and an upgraded turbocharger. Still on a standard tune file. We've gained 28 horsepower at the tire and around 70 newton meters of torque. Most of these gains are from the new exhaust system and that upgraded turbocharger. With the three inch exhaust on it now, it's a lot more free of flowing and getting those exhaust gases out and that turbocharger is working way more efficiently. With everything running more efficiently, the turbocharger is running an extra around three PSI boost. With that, it's lift the AFR around three, a bit over three and a half points to 20 to one. So that'll give us some nice amount of room when we start tuning it. With the three inch exhaust on it, we also saw a massive drop in exhaust back pressure. With the base run done, Bodie got to work adjusting the tune. To help with tuning the car, we installed an ECU shop Ultra Boost. This gives us way better control over the ECU and lets us have multiple maps. Just did a nice conservative tune on this D40 Navara with the ECU Shop Ultra Boost. We've gained 42 horsepower and around 90 newton meters at the tire. So some changes in the ECU Shop Ultra Boost. We were able to lift the turbo boost up to 26 pound, drop an AFR to around 17 to one with some changes to inject uh, common rail pressure and the mat changes to the turbocharger. So all around, pretty solid gain. Uh, on a relatively conservative tune. Righto, so in the mode two setting, which enables us to have multiple maps with the Ultra Boost, we've gained around 80 horsepower at the tire and 170 odd newton meters, which is a solid effort for this D40 Navara. We've lifted the turbo boost pressure to around 30 pound, 30 PSI, and AFRs are pretty much a flat 16 to one. Overall, it's picked up serious gains all over. As you can see here, we've got the factory 100 horsepower and our mode 2 setting of 205 so pretty much doubled the horsepower and also doubled the torque which is a pretty amazing outcome on a with just bolt-on parts on a d40 navara dyno numbers are one thing but let's see how this thing actually drives so it just feels like it's got more power everywhere and you put your foot down it just goes way better to drive. It's way more responsive to So I'm super happy with how the cars turned out. It's so much more fun to drive. Looking back at the dyno videos though, our intake air temps were getting to about 68 degrees, so it's getting pretty hot. So keep an eye out for our next video where we'll be upgrading our intercooler.